Like a Dragon, Ichin made it to European shores on the 21st of February 2023, almost nine years after its original Japanese launch. Releasing for PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, Series, and PC, this is somewhere between a remake and a remaster of that original game, with the experience dressed up a little for its global debut. This game drops the Yakuza moniker that may be more familiar to fans in the West, but make no mistake, this is very much a part of Studio Ryo Gagotoku's long-running franchise. Ishin is set in the Bakamatsu era and sees Japan struggling with the arrival of foreign powers, including the British, and deals with issues that arise as their ideals and weapons circulate throughout the country. As a snapshot in time from nearly a decade ago, this title shares more in common with Yakuza 0 than it does 2020's Like a Dragon. This is a pivot from turn-based brawling in the streets to real-time brawling in the streets. Common themes for this series include betrayal, honor and loyalty, and often the loss of a father figure. These are usually the rigid narrative elements of the series that are anchored in realism, while the majority of the side content tends to be a wavering line that can sometimes be described as fluidly surreal, and at others, objective insanity. Like a Dragon Ishin puts the player in the role of Sakamoto Ryama, a ronin seeking to avenge the murder of his adoptive father. His search leads him to the capital of Kyo, and sees him join an organization called the Shinsengumi as a means to finding the killer. This story could be said to depict Ryoma's tale as one of revenge, and that is indeed his personal driving force. Almost every other story facet homes in on keenly powerful men who are seeking to either protect or exploit Japan as foreign powers arrive. The world this game paints is one of respect and a sense of duty, and almost every meaningful interaction is followed with or preceded by a clash of blades. Much of the main cast is male, with very few women having prominent roles. This is not just a product of the historical setting, but staying true within this does limit the number of roles they can organically be placed in. The two who are the closest to main cast status are Ario and Atose, who work at the inn Ryoma stays at for the duration of his time in Kyo. They are presented as thoughtful and caring, and there are some ulterior motives at play which adds a little depth, where in truth I wasn't expecting to find any. These characters play such cliché roles in the game that I found them intrusive. Their motivations, even the allegedly hidden ones, were predictable, and that in turn made them quite uninteresting. The cast that are given the majority of the limelight are the captains of the Shinsengumi. The standout by far is Akita, who uses the same character model as Yakuza Zero's Goro Majima. As in that game, he is an aggressive wildcard who is both friend and foe at specific moments throughout the story. He's always interesting, even if he is a cliché too. He's essentially a bloodthirsty, violence-loving psychopath. His implementation is vital to break up what would otherwise be a lot of politics and posturing in the main narrative, and his personality does provide a ready-made excuse for some of the more unexpected combat encounters. Ryoma himself is… well, he's Kazuma Kiryu, a stoic giant of a man who lives in a universe where brute strength and a caring heart will carry him far. He's certainly not a protagonist that's designed to steal the show and the limelight. He's designed to let the set pieces happen around him, and with that, he serves his purpose to let the player enjoy any and all aspects of the content, no matter how unlikely they would be in reality. The primary setting for this adventure is the capital of Japan at the time, Kyo. This is a winding sprawl with stores to buy basic food items, intermingled with pubs and bars, along with some more unexpected locales. This is instanced with some districts within the city located between loading screens, but for the most part you are free to explore as you please. This world is quite densely packed, with key locations at opposite sides to drive the player through certain areas and try and grab your eye with side content. I have no basis on which to determine if this is an authentic recreation of the city, but it certainly fits and feels appropriate for the aesthetic they're going for. It feels sufficiently lived in, and the NPCs are used to good effect to create an atmosphere around some form of marketplace. This feeds into the gameplay loop of exploring the city, seeking out side quests and completionist activities, along with a few unique additions for this installment. Outside the main plot to track down a killer, Ryoma finds himself saddled with debt and a young ward, and must play a slice-of-life farming minigame where you grow an assortment of crops and cook meals to help pay off this debt. Another unique addition here comes in the protagonist's role as a Shinsengumi captain, as you lead your squad to clear out bandits in dungeon-style encounters. Other activities fall into the traditional Yakuza fare, and help create the series' almost iconic juxtaposition in tone. One minute super serious men are discussing how to overthrow the political powers of the country, and then a few seconds later, you're in a bar playing a rhythm karaoke game.
This game takes these sections so seriously that it does come full circle, and lands back in the realm of sheer insanity. This surrealism extends way beyond karaoke, and infects almost every aspect of the game, from pulling a great white out of the ocean with a fishing pole, to pulling troopers for your squad in a gacha style minigame. I knew going into this that I wouldn't be trying to hit 100% completion, because there's a lot to do, and the game wants you to do basically all of it, and do all of it well. I did as much as I could that felt organic, and that I came across without specifically looking up a guide for, and I finished this game with less than 50% completion. I can walk away feeling satisfied with this, because I'm about to move on and play another title. If you're sticking around to attempt to check off all of Ishin's completionist boxes, know that this is going to take some time. Assuming you're spending tens of hours in the game, not hundreds, the true crux of the gameplay is going to be the combat, and for better or worse, this feels its age more than any other part of this game. This is a brawler with some RPG elements and skills, but that mostly follows linear progression of adding more orbs to unlock these skills. These tend to fall in the way of increasing utility for each of the game's four combat styles, or just passive buffs to help or raw damage. Ultimately, these feel much less impactful than they are, and this system suffers most from skills being contextual and not actually increasing your base moveset a great deal. Even 60 hours into the game, you're repeating janky 1-2-3 combos to deal damage and build heat, which allows you to use your more powerful abilities. This never feels clean or precise, and utility skills like parry and dodge can't always be cleanly woven into these combos, and you fall into a trance of button mashing or playing on the counter because the options just aren't there for you to do much else. You are able to switch between four fighting stances, but these can't be chained together in a manner that emphasises combat flexibility. It may only be for a moment, but you have to return Ryoma to a rest position between these combos in order to switch styles. This is mitigated by some of the heat actions, which are mostly contextual, but generate some cinematic highlights as Ryoma performs various flashy attacks that deal big damage. These spectacles are unique and exciting early on, but do get repetitive as you use them a lot against bosses to take chunks of their health away. I can't judge this combat too harshly, as it's very much a product of this game's age, but I'm evaluating this appropriately for a title that made its debut, in my country at least, in 2023. Another product of this game's age are some of the camera choices, which move from fixed positions to over the shoulder, free moving at certain points, and can end up with some directional control shifting awkwardly as this change occurs. The upgrade system in place for weapons and gear make this feel much more like an RPG, with the seal system granting some customization and utility. The biggest problem I had with this was the harsh gating of the smithing feature. You can have all the ingredients ready to make a better sword, if you haven't put hours into farming the blacksmith's smithing level, you're going to be stuck dealing with the gear the main story hands you, with no way to improve your combat effectiveness until you've donated enough gear or spent enough money crafting your own. To perhaps oversimplify things, this makes progression almost linear with story content until the end game, and made the plethora of side content here less valuable as a result. It doesn't matter if I make Ryoma the richest man in Kyo, or the best dancer, if I'm still hours and hours away from being able to access a weapon worth a damn. While I appreciate a lot of these minigames, most of them were fluff that gives you more things to check off a list, rather than more ways to improve your character. Outside of my objective opinion, I personally found these systems and choices to be inferior to those that were in Yakuza 0. This was a game that came out in the West in 2017, but was released after Like a Dragon Ishin in Japan. If you've played Yakuza 0, this will feel somewhat weaker in every aspect, as the minigames and key side content there are just much better. Yakuza 0's overt surrealism was peppered alongside the lavish hedonism of Inner City Tokyo, and this was truly more familiar to your Western player than this feudal bloodbath is. This also isn't helped by the fact that we got to experience Yakuza 0 first, and that is an incredibly tough act to follow. There are also a few strange choices within the game that left me scratching my head, starting with the message that reads, Real Samurai Use Gamepads, that lingers on the screen each time I load this from Steam. I am using an Xbox One controller to play this, but seeing this message really grates on you after a while. This ought to have flashed up once at the start of a new game, and then never appeared again. There's also a lot of random encounters that you get dropped into that wreck this pacing hard. I know this is a dense and lived-in world, and I want to praise it for that, but around every corner are bandits that you almost get forced into fights with. Yakuza 0 had this problem too, but I don't remember it being quite this frequent. Finally, there's a certain disconnect in some of the graphical presentation, 
Models that are taken from the other Yakuza games give this title a more of a remake feel. Some of the more boxy body parts take away from the touch-ups that have been done well. Like a Dragon Ishin is a competent release, but ends up feeling more like it was released in this manner as a form of backfilling part of a missing order, which fans of the series will no doubt appreciate. The setting and story are likely the main appeal, and there's a proven western market for it following the success of games like Ghost of Tsushima. Yet this is still very much a game that feels like it came out in 2014, and if you're a new player to the series, both 2020's Like a Dragon and 2017's Yakuza 0 are cheaper on all platforms and in my opinion vastly superior.